Hey all y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie, and this is where I talk about my knitting opinions, my preferences, my tips, my tricks, and guess what? We are in the holiday season. A lot of us are gonna be traveling in the next couple of weeks, which means there are a lot of knitters who have questions about what they can bring onto the plane. Well, I'm here to give you all my travel tips, tricks, and information, so stay tuned. So today we're going to talk about traveling and knitting and I thought since this is going to be a chattier video um, as we do this I'm just going to go ahead and start what is actually my favorite knitting project to travel with um, and it's this. These are just dishcloths. This dishcloth is basically a flat medallion but this pattern is actually really special to me because my grandmother knitted and when she traveled, this is what she would make, or these round dishcloths. This is just a classic dishcloth pattern. I have this pattern memorized, and so this has become, like my grandmother, this has become my travel pattern. So this dishcloth is knitted flat. Um, with short rows to make it round, and then the two ends come together and you have to join those two ends to complete the circle. The way that I like to start this pattern is actually with a provisional cast on um, that I can then knit around and then I graph the two sides of the circle together to complete it and it's a nearly seamless finish. The provisional cast on actually that I'm using is a cast on that's used a lot for toe up socks called Judy's Magic Cast On. It's a very cool cast on. What's neat about this cast on is you actually get an equal number of loops on either side of the provisional cast on. Fourteen. 15. If you want a tutorial on this cast on, I'm happy to do one. Let me know. I end up with a really long tail. That's fine because I'll use this tail to graft my two ends of my medallion together. So then I'm going to pull out this needle here. I'm using a 32 inch um, circular needle and now my cable is acting as a stitch holder for these stitches down below which are just going to hang out and chill while I knit around the medallion. So that's tip number one for traveling with your knitting is you have an easy go-to travel pattern that you have memorized or it's just very simple where the directions you can easily read on your phone. The less paraphernalia you have to deal with when you're sitting on a cramped plane and knitting the better and that's what's really nice about this pattern in particular is a I have it memorized I've done this so many times so many times one of the things though I like most about knitting dishcloths is oftentimes by the end of the flight if not the end of the whole trip I've finished it and I can leave it um, especially when I'm visiting family, I can leave the dishcloth with them and they just think it's the coolest thing. And if dishcloth sounds a little economical, I'd say, <laughs> you can always get fancy and call it a spa cloth. Let's see, other good travel projects are hats. Um, if you just have a basic hat pattern memorized, that's always a nice travel pattern. I like to do those on cruises a lot of times because um, it's a little bit longer of a project. It'll take me through the entire cruise. And I actually have um, a gaugeless hat that I do where I start center out. I'm planning in the next couple of weeks to just put up free directions to doing a gaugeless hat. Um, that's something on my blog. Keep an eye out. If you don't, if you haven't looked at my blog at all, please check that out because there I do give like the BTS on this channel, but also BTS being behind the scenes. <laughs> but also a lot of times I'll put additional information up or um, directions. For example, again, I'll put a link up here for the video. I did a video on using duplicate stitch 
for weaving in your ends. And on my blog, I put directions on how to do a practice swatch for that. If you're a sock knitter, socks make excellent um, travel projects, especially just the vanilla sock pattern. Personally, with socks, I don't knit on deep hands. I prefer knitting socks when I can on two circular needles, and that works very nicely for travel. A lot of times when I'm traveling and I'll be gone longer than a week, I will pack a additional project in my checked luggage. Um, you know, dishcloths are great. I love knitting my dishcloth, obviously, but, you know... Just having just this to work with isn't necessarily the most fun. One thing though, always that you're risking when you are packing things into a checked bag is that that bag goes missing forever into the Bermuda Triangle of luggage. So not usually when I pack my best yarns. A lot of times I'll pack more economical yarns that if I were to lose them, I wouldn't be devastated. Again, we're talking about traveling. When you're traveling, you have to be prepared to lose things. And so you don't want to travel with things that you would just be devastated if you lost. Today I'm knitting with my high, high sharp needles because these were just here and convenient. Uh, however, these are not the needles I normally travel with. I have a particular set of interchangeable needles that I travel with. That's these. These are the Nova Platina Cubics needles. The reason I like to travel with these is A, this is a very compact set. Um, you have your needles here. I can open this up. If you want a full review of this set, I have my Epic Needle Review that you can check out. I'll have a link up here for you to click on. Um, back here are all my cables, end stops, uh, keys, plenty of keys, connector cables, everything. But the big reason that this is actually my travel knitting needles is because this is one of my more economical sets of needles. Here in the United States, TSA regulations do allow knitting needles onto the plane in your carry-on. However, there is always the caveat that the TSA agent at the gate has final say in terms of what they're going to allow through airport security. So you do come across stories of knitters whose knitting needles were confiscated, which is Let's all have a moment of silence, because that's just... So, you have a choice. One, don't risk it at all. Don't bring knitting onto the plane. Eh, not a fantastic choice. Or... You have your travel set of knitting needles, which are usually less expensive, that if you lost them, yes, it would be disappointing, but replacing them wouldn't break the bank either. So that's what these Knitter Pride needles are for me. I love these needles. I would be so upset if TSA ever confiscated them, but I would be okay. I have plenty of other... <laughs> If you watch my Epic Needle review, you know I have plenty of other needle sets. I could replace these. These are not... They're not cheap, but they're certainly not the most expensive interchangeable needle set that I have by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. By the way, always check before you leave. Check the TSA website to see what their regulations are because they do change over time. Also, if you are active on Twitter, you can always go to Ask TSA to ask any questions about what may or may not be allowed on an airplane. Whether you can bring knitting needles onto the plane varies country by country. And whatever country you are departing from has say over whether you can bring your knitting needles onto the plane. So for example, quite a few years ago, my husband and I were flying to Europe because we were going to do a transatlantic cruise with my in-laws. Amazing vacation, by the way. Anyway, so we were gonna, so first we were flying from Los Angeles to Paris because my husband and I wanted to spend a couple of days in France. Then we were going from Paris to London where we were gonna board the ship and then we were gonna take the ship back to Florida. Obviously, it was bringing a lot of knitting on this trip. <laughs> Obviously. 
traveling from the United States to France was no problem. I had my knitting. It was quite delightful. However, in France, I looked it up and France did not allow me to bring knitting needles through security. So that's the tip. If you're traveling in, oh, time to turn. So that's the tip. If you're traveling internationally, make sure that you check your departing country's regulations. Personally, I prefer circular needles, especially, just generally, truthfully, but especially when I travel, I like circular needles just because they are the most versatile needles. I can knit flat, I can knit in the round. Um, if I'm knitting something like socks, I can knit with two circular needles. That's actually my preferred way of knitting socks is with two circular needles. You'll see online people talk about how they'll bring um, the Takumi interchangeable um, needle set with them. Takumi, these are bamboo knitting needles, and I know a lot of people love bamboo knitting needles. I am not one of them. I do not like bamboo. Bamboo knitting needles to me is just like the devil sticks. I do not like knitting with bamboo needles. However, if you do, that is definitely a brand that I hear a lot of people mention. Another brand you might want to take a look at is Knit Picks. They have very affordable needles that are on sale all the time. You might have seen my uh, what's in my notions bag video if you haven't got it up here um, and in here when I travel there are my embroidery scissors now the TSA regulation in terms of scissors is that the blade cannot be longer than four inches from the pivot point so the pivot point is here and so this that's definitely less than four inches so technically I can bring these on with my carry-on luggage. This is my thread cutter. This item is actually not allowed on your carry-on luggage according to TSA regulations. So if you choose to keep this in your notions bag, you are always running the risk of having it confiscated by the TSA. Um, another nice thing to make sure that you have with you when you travel is side nail clippers. Why? If for some reason you have a hangnail while you're knitting or something happens, you have nail clippers so that you can just take care of it and it doesn't get in the way of knitting your project. But the other nice thing with nail clippers is these can also act as a thread cutter. And one final thing that I like to make sure I always have with me when I'm traveling um, is just a little emery board. This is a glass one that I got at Ulta and yeah, Again, if something happens with my nail, I can just fix it and it doesn't get in the way of my knitting. And then of course, I have my little tin here that has all of my stitch markers and my tapestry needle. This is more important really for when I am at my destination and I'm still knitting. Hopefully don't have to pull this stuff out while I'm on an airplane, but you know, you wanna make sure you have them. Sometimes you'll read online advice to have like just a separate knitting bag that you bring on board, but that's not always possible. This is the bag that I use when I am traveling. This was actually a camera bag that my husband had that he decided he wasn't going to use this one. He got another one he liked better. So he was like, would you like for this for knitting? And I was like, yes. And what I love about this is that it has like this space back here where if I need to, I can totally put a computer or I can store things. It has this flap that yes, opens up and inside there's plenty of room for like my headphones, a device. I can put my knitting in here in this area and I have room for my notions bag. It's all great. But then when I'm on the plane, um, this zips open at the top so I don't have to open up the flap. I can just reach in and grab whatever I need. My wallet can go in here separate from my knitting so they're apart from each other and everything's nice and contained in this one bag. It's great. Um, and what I'll do is for a smaller purse or a handbag, um, I'll just pack that either in my roller bag 
for when I'm at my destination or I'll pack it in my check-in luggage. So that's how I handle baggage and knitting. <laughs> Sorry, sounds like something a therapist would want to discuss, baggage and knitting. My last tip for traveling with your knitting is to choose your yarn wisely. A lot of times airplanes, cars, they don't have the best lighting. Um, I've tried to travel with a book light to help and it really hasn't. So in choosing yarn, you want to choose a yarn that has nice stitch definition, that's lighter in color, that you're going to be able to see in dimmer light. Um, another reason that I like working dishcloths on airplanes is because cotton generally has very nice stitch definition so I don't have to worry about seeing it. So yeah, that's the last tip. Choose your yarn wisely. Traveling is not the time to break out your navy blue yarn or uh, your that novelty yarn you've been wanting to try out. Stick with something tried and true. So I've gotten to the end of my little wedge here and I'm just going to finish off these short rows. And I have a nice little dishcloth going here. Um, or a washcloth or a spa cloth, depending on what you want to call it. These are German double stitch short rows. You know, it's funny because we talk about short rows like Japanese short rows, wrap and turn short rows, yarn over short rows, yada, 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 as if they're different. But really, a short row is a short row. The only difference between um, these different techniques is how you are bridging the gap that forms between the last stitch that you knitted before the turn and the first stitch on the other side of that turn. And I really, I really like German double stitch short rows. They're easy, they're tidy. This is what they look like when you're done working them. Look how nice and tidy that is. Like, if you're just glancing past quickly, you wouldn't even notice these short rows. I, should, I like to do a whole video series on short rows because I love working short rows. I love projects that involve short rows. Um, I like using short rows to create motifs. I had a video that I shot a few weeks ago where I was wearing an infinity scarf or a really long cowl, depending on what you want to call it. And that was all done with short rows. It was just me playing around with short rows. My favorite sock heel is the short row sock heel. although. I use a different type of short row uh, heel and toe than what is normally taught. It's called a boomerang. And if you want a tutorial on that, comment below. Actually, well, no, comment below. So I know that you want a tutorial on it, but I do plan to do a video after the New Year's about the that short row heel and toe technique. A boomerang and a yo-yo, they're two separate things. I love them. If you're traveling this holiday season, I hope you have a wonderful and safe trip full of joyous knitting. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I would love the gift of subscribers. So please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, which will let you know whenever I upload a new video. All my social media is down below. I'd love to hear from you on any of the platforms that I'm on, which include Ravelry, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, as I mentioned in my video, check out my blog. Um, I may be putting up directions to this little project that I'm working on. Again, thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, weekend, evening, whenever you may be watching this. As always, happy knitting. Can we travel with our needles? Can I? What can I bring on a plane? Well, I'm gonna give you all my all the little, almost had it, almost had it. No matter how small, no matter how big. <laughs> to steal a phrase, there's no such thing as small knits. There's only never mind. Right? <laughs> I said that. My point is, which is the United States um, Airport Security. It stands for travel. What does TSA stand for? I prefer... Ooh.
Itu tapi kan. Apa? Oh, it's itchy, 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 itchy. Ooh, tra la 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 la. Do you know Santa Claus coming to town is not in fact public domain? That is a copywritten song. So weird things that you learn working reality television. <laughs>